Mike Kai in Ohio, and I got your letter a couple days ago. Uh, you have a good memory uh, of seeing the airplane uh, many years ago, my airplane at Bro uh, Beloit Airport in Wisconsin, so I appreciated your kind words about the airplane, and your questions were really good. Uh, uh, congratulations on your airplane. I'm glad you have one. That's exciting. And uh, the Jenny gear, I think the Jenny gear looks the best of all the landing gears on a Pete and Cole, so I'm glad you have that option. So. Uh, my wife, is, Carrie, is taking video for me. We stopped out at the hangar here on Saturday. And I uh, thought the easiest way to do this would be to just show you a video of what I did. And then you can decide if that work, if that's good for you or you want to make a, a slight modification to make that work. Uh, the first thing I'll go over is bungee cords. Bungee cords, I use a half-inch diameter bungee cords. And um, I buy them. Actually, maybe Carrie can get a close-up of this. I buy them from this place. Here, it's called Reef Scuba, Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, these are, and you can see the, uh, the yellow or the orange tag. It's half inch, half inch diameter bungee material. And that's the part number. I don't know if they're in business anymore. I bought this a couple years ago. Thank you, Carrie. But what it is, it's real high quality bungee. Okay, that's good, buddy, thank you. And then, what it is, is this is real high quality bungee material, and it's not the stuff that you're going to find at Wix or Aircraft Spruce. Don't buy that stuff, because if you buy half inch bungee, it's actually 5 8 diameter. It's too thick, it's too hard to stretch and pull around your axle. But this stuff, you can buy this on Amazon. A lot of sailboat users and marine people use this stuff, and uh, this is the stuff you want. I, I find that the, the half, the true half inch from Wix and Aircraft Spruce is not at all half inch. It's five eighths in diameter, way too, way too hard to wrap and pull. So this, I use six feet of this on each side. This is much longer than six feet, but for demonstration purposes, I'll show you. Um, down here, we can see how I have it wrapped in a figure eight fashion, and it's wrapped with tie wraps. And what we do is um, I wrap, I make a loop, initially a loop around the first part of the axle. And you don't have to do it this way, but this is how I do it. So maybe uh, I'll get down here on the cardboard and show you right here, right here in front, from here, Carrie, right? over here. Um, we, we go, I just, I'm going to look at this. So we take... Thank you. So we take this and loop it around the axle one time, like this, and then take tie wraps and wrap these a couple times, like, like maybe six of them in a row, these tie wraps, and then I use a tie wrap gun to pull them tight. I don't know, you can buy this on Amazon, you might even have one, but I buy high quality, you don't want cheap tie wraps, you want good quality tie wraps. And um, so you can use uh, radiator clamps on these. People have used radiator clamps or wire, safety wire. I don't like either of those because they tend to chafe into the, the, into the bungee cord. But you, you uh, pull those super tight and then you start wrapping the bungee in a, in a figure eight fashion around. I'll grab it here. Oh, thank you. You, you. you wrap the bungee in a figure eight fashion. You start the loop, and you can see these, these are the tie wraps. And on my first loop, I cut these and then file them because you don't want the subsequent wraps uh, as, as, the, as the axle rides up and down. You don't want these other tie wraps to chafe. You see how they're underneath there they're they're you don't want these to chafe against the other bolts and hardware and things like that as the axles going up and down so you the other question you asked and then you uh you, you actually keep wrapping them back and forth until you come to a uh till you bring it around to the top and you're ready to sorry about the shaky video but you, you're ready to tie them off again and that's where you can see I tied a bunch of them off here. And uh, just as a safety measure, goes go quite a ways around. 
but sometimes you have to wrap like you'll have to wrap that side and then this side and the other side a couple times to get the axle so that it's not too loose and not too tight and I can show you what that's like in um, uh, I'll have Carrie take a take a, a video of the axle while I rock the wings so if you get down here Carrie just take an overall shot of the of both sides of the landing gear. So that's the that's kind of the movement you want to see even on both sides. And then when when you're sitting in the airplane with a passenger and gasoline, you don't want the axle riding more than like a half inch off of the bottom white ash. Because if it's like this far off <laughs> of the ash bearer, your bungees are too loose. If the axle is not even off the, the wood at all with a full load, your bungees are way too tight. So it takes a while. It takes, it's kind of an art to get a feel for how much tension you have to get on these. So the, the other question you ask is how you keep the axle from going side to side and fore and aft. And I solve that by uh, a friend of mine, Frank Pavliga, that has a peat and pole nearby here. He had a design for this idea that he did not incorporate into his airplane, but they were going to. I went ahead and incorporated it on my axle, and it, it's worked really well. And I'll show you the details of that here. I think, I don't know which side is better, but I can grab the camera here and show you what I got. So, here Carrie, I can take it, thank you. So what I did, I can send you photos of this too. This is really hard to see. But I welded this rod, I don't even know how big this is, half inch, half inch piece of chromoly steel to the bottom of the axle up here. And then there's a sleeve of a collar, if you will, that's welded to the inside of this plate and this pin rides inside this sleeve or this collar up and down and I grease it a little bit and then at the bottom here this is thick wall too this is a thick wall tubing very thick 4130 you want a, a big bead of big weld up here and a, a lot you don't have to drill into the axle to weld this in you can just weld it uh, you know, on the surface, but a good thick bead around here. And at the bottom, I welded in a washer. I'm sorry, a, a hex nut, a hex nut. And so this is a bolt and a 41 in a washer so that when this goes up and down, if this, if the, if the bungee would ever break, this washer should theoretically hold this, the landing gear from going up into the fuselage because that's where the landing gear would go. The wheel would go all the way up into the fuselage. And you don't want that damage. So I have two safety items here that you might want to incorporate. One is a cable loop. The, a lot of planes have this cable loop. You just Nike press an eighth inch cable around here, around the whole assembly. So that if your bungee cord does break, the axle won't go up into the fuselage belly. And then the other portion of that, maybe you can see better here. Again, I apologize for the video. This is a little more clear, I think. Here, that is the the welded. It's just a lot of black in here. It's just this is a bad angle to see, but you kind of get the idea that this is a collar of the 4130 here welded to this plate. This is the pin mm -hmm. welded to the axle, and then the nut welded at the bottom of this. 4130 rod and then a quarter 20 or quarter 28 I can't think of what it whatever it was not screwed in there with a I think I don't even know if I have a safety washer or a lock washer but that's it um, and that keeps the I've just greased those a little bit or sprayed WD-40 on them once in a while and just just you know and, and uh, they have to be positioned perfectly you know for them to you don't want them binding and on occasion I've had to re-weld these collars because they have they have split a little bit uh, but that helps to keep the axle from spinning 
while you're applying your brakes and also keeps the axle from going, like you said, left to right and fore and aft. So it works pretty good. These are go-kart brakes. These are Comet go-kart brakes. And if you look on my YouTube channel, I have another channel, or I have a, a, a YouTube video about how these are installed. And I'll send you a link to that video too. And these are, these are heel brakes. I installed heel brakes with return springs on them in there. Um, works fine. It works really well. Oh, Kerry brought a flashlight. This is really good. Yeah, you, uh, thank you. That's great. That's perfect. I can hold both actually on this. That's awesome. That's really good. Great idea. Okay, so there's the welded tube. You can see how dirty that is. The welded tube into the bottom of the axle. And then you can see the uh, collar right there. And then the tube. So that's how that works. The one thing I found is that before you weld this, before you make this decision, if you want to make this go that route, you have to take, make sure these, these, these cables are tight. I mean, really tight. And of course, these have to be a good, good wall thickness to keep the gear from collapsing. So you're, bra you're drawing this thing in as a bridge. That was a great idea with the flashlight. Thank you. So if these are not tight, I mean, these are really tight. Um, that will, that otherwise your landing gear is going to flex like this a little bit in and out. And then you're going to have trouble with these holes and it's going to start putting a flexing, uh, a, you know, a bending moment right here. You don't want that. I actually saw some small splits happening right here. And Frank Pavliga advised me that I probably should go ahead and cut the land, take the landing gear off, cut it. And glue in, you know, run a saw blade through there and run a, run a piece of plywood in there so that these bolts would go through plywood. I did this on the front and the rear. And uh, thank you. That's great. Just to make sure that those, those bolts had something good to go through. So that's eighth inch plywood, I think, in there. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I'll send you the video on how I did the brakes. And I made my own wheels. Um, bolted that. That stainless, that's a stainless steel disc that a friend of mine, a friend of mine machined for me. Um, it's just a, a piece of 4130 bracket that I welded up to go to the landing gear. I'll send you a video on that. That's a whole nother uh, ball of wax, but you may have your brakes figured out. And they're just, I just use heel brakes on mine. So I think that's about it. But that keeps the axle from going back and forth and side to side and it also gives you a vertical um, guidance there and then the axle doesn't rotate when you apply your brakes the axle won't rotate underneath the bungee cords now if you look at world war one airplanes world war one airplanes like in the air force museum or if you look at close-up pictures of their brakes you will find that uh, sometimes the axles what they've done is uh, this is kind of smart uh, what they did very very smart innovative idea on the axle they welded like a box around the axle a square and then they welded a, a square channel up around the top of that so the axle stays within this box it rides up and down in this channel it doesn't twist like this um, but that doesn't address the left and right issue this design addresses the, the you know, the rotational forces with the brakes, the up and down, left and right issues. So uh, that was kind of a cool thing. I don't think they had brakes on World War One aircraft, so I don't think they were worried about the rotational aspects of it. But so I hope, Dennis, that answers your questions. Thank you, Carrie, for taking the video. That was great. Sorry that if it was shaky a little bit, but I think you get the idea. Um, and this is there's nothing written in stone that you have to use tie wraps or half inch bungee a cord but that's what I use and that's what's worked with for me and I actually have had um, I have to change these about every three or four years they start getting brittle and they start chafing and you know I just I just like to uh, change them out every once in a while and um, it seems to do a good job 
if I do that. So that's it. I'm sure you, you've seen the airplane. It sounds like you might have pictures of it and everything. And there's a lot of YouTube videos. If you look on YouTube, I have a lot of videos. If you just Google my name and Pete and Paul or Smoke System, you'll see uh, videos on that if you care to watch them. But I think that's it. I hope that answers your questions. And uh, if not, feel free to email me. I do have a lot of detailed pictures that I have taken over the years of the landing gear and the anti-rotation device that I can email you and, and all. So um, hopefully this, these, this will give you ideas so you can go ahead and finish that aspect of your landing gear. I hope you get to fly this spring and this summer. Um, you have to tell me a little more about your airplane. And I'd love to, uh, if you would send pictures of your, your airplane and uh, I'd like to see it. So um, we don't fly up to Wisconsin much anymore. Flew up to Broadhead a couple years ago for the Pete and Paul Flying down there. That's a good event, the weekend before Oshkosh. There's usually about 15 or 20, sometimes more, Pete and Poles that show up at Broadhead Airport. Um, so we flew, we flew up there two years ago, I think. About every other year, every third year I fly up there. Um, so I don't, I don't plan on flying up this summer, but... Uh, uh, if you're ever in Ohio, you're welcome to come down and see the airplane. And uh, wish you the best. Thanks for your, thanks for your letter. And uh, hope you and your family uh, have a good 2020. Thanks a lot.